Law 10. Infection. Avoid the unhappy and unlucky. You can die from someone else's misery. Emotional states are as infectious as diseases. You may feel you are helping the drowning man, but you are only precipitating your own disaster. The unfortunate sometimes draw misfortune on themselves. They will also draw it on you. Associate Swick the happy and fortunate instead. Transgression of the law. Born in Limerick, Ireland in 1818, Marie Gilbert came to Paris in the 1840s to make her fortune as a dancer and performer. Taking the name Lola Montes, her mother was a distant Spanish descent. She claimed to be a flamenco dancer from Spain. By 1845, her career was languishing and to survive, she became a courtesan. Quickly, one of the more successful in Paris, only one man could salvage Lola's dancing career. Alexander Deja owner of the newspaper with the largest circulation in France and also the newspaper's drama critic. She decided to woo and conquer him. Investigating his habits, she discovered that he went riding every morning an excellent horsewoman herself. She rode out one morning and accidentally ran into him. Soon they were riding together every day. A few weeks later, Lola moved into his apartment for a while. The two were happy together with Dajar. V's help, Lola began to revive her dancing career. Despite the risk to his social standing, Deja told friends he would marry her in the spring. Lola had never told him that she had eloped at age 19 with an Englishman and was still legally married. Although Deja was deeply in love, his life started to slide downhill. His fortunes and business changed and influential friends began to avoid him. One night, Deja was invited to a party attended by some of the wealthiest young men in Paris. Lola wanted to go too, but he would not allow it. They had their first quarrel and Deja attended the party by himself there, hopelessly drunk. He insulted an influential drama critic Jean Baptist, perhaps because of something the critic had said about Lola. The following morning, Boone challenged him to a duel. Ballon was one of the best pistol shots in France. Deja tried to apologize, but the duel took place and he was shot and killed. Thus ended the life of one of the most promising young men of Paris society. Devastated Lola left Paris. In 1846, Lola Monti found herself in Munich, where she decided to woo and conquer King Ludwig of Bavaria. The best way to Ludwig she discovered was through his aide-de-camp Count Otto von Rixburg, a man with a fondness for pretty girls. One day when the Count was breakfasting at an outdoor cafe, Lola rode by on her horse, was accidentally thrown from the saddle and landed at Berg's feet. The Count rushed to help her and was enchanted. He promised to introduce her to Ludwig. Rixburg arranged an audience with the king for Lola, but once she arrived in the anteroom, she could hear the king saying he was too busy to meet a favor-seeking stranger. Lola pushed aside the sentries and entered his room. Anyway, in the process, the front of her dress somehow got torn, perhaps by her, perhaps by one of the sentries, and to the astonishment of all, most especially the king. Her bare breasts were brazenly exposed. Lola was granted her audience with Ludwig. Fifty-five hours later, she made her debut on the Bavarian stage. The reviews were terrible, but that did not stop. Ludwig from arranging more performances. Ludwig was in his own words, bewitched by Lola. He started to appear in public with her on his arm, and then he bought and furnished an apartment for her on one of Munich's most fashionable boulevards. Although he had been known as a miser and was not given to flights of fancy, he started to shower Lola with gifts and to write poetry for her. Now, his favored mistress, she catapulted to fame and fortune overnight. Lola began to lose her sense of proportion. One day when she was out riding an elderly man rode ahead of her a bit too slowly for her liking. Unable to pass him, she began to slash him with her riding crop. On another occasion, she took her dog unleashed out for a stroll. The dog attacked a passerby. But instead of helping the man get the dog away, she whipped him with the leash. Incidents like this infuriated Fido, citizens of Bavaria, but Ludwig stood by Lola and even had her naturalized as a Bavarian citizen. The king's entourage tried to wake him to the dangers of the affair, but those who criticized Lola were summarily fired. While Bavarians, who had loved their king now outwardly disrespected him, Lola was made a countess, had a new palace built for herself, and began to dabble in politics advising Ludwig on policy. She was the most powerful force in the kingdom. Her influence in the king's cabinet continued to grow, and she treated the other ministers with disdain. As a result, riots broke out throughout the realm. A once peaceful land was virtually in the grip of civil war, and students everywhere were chanting Al Smith Loke. By February of 1848, Ludwig was finally unable to withstand the pressure. With great sadness, he ordered Lola to leave Bavaria immediately. She left, but not until she was paid off for the next five weeks. The Bavarians' wrath was turned against their formerly beloved king in March of that year. He was forced to abdicate Lola Montez' move to England. More than anything she needed respectability, and despite being married, she still had not arranged a divorce from the Englishman she had read. Years before she set her sights on, George Trafford healed a promising young army officer who was the son of an influential barrister. Although he was ten years younger than Lola and could have chosen a wife among the prettiest, 
and wealthiest young girls of English society, healed, fell under her spell. They were married in 1849, soon arrested on the charge of bigamy. She skipped bail and she and Heald made their way to Spain. They quarreled horribly, and on one occasion, Lola slashed him with a knife. Finally, she drove him away. Returning to England, he found he had lost his position in the army, ostracized from English society. He moved to Portugal where he lived in poverty. After a few months, his short life ended in a boating accident. A few years later, the man who published Lola Monti's autobiography went bankrupt. In 1853, Lola moved to California where she met and married a man named Pat Hall. Their relationship was as stormy as all the others, and she left Hall for another man. He took to drink and fell into a deep depression that lasted until he died four years later. Still a relatively young man at the age of 41, Lola gave away her clothes and finery and turned to God. She toured America lecturing on religious topics, dressed in white and wearing a halo-like white headgear. She died two years later in 1861. Interpretation Lola Montes attracted men with her wiles, but her power over them went beyond the sexual. It was through the force of her character that she kept her lovers enthralled. Men were sucked into the maelstrom. She churned up around her. They felt confused, upset, but the strength of the emotions she stirred also made them feel more alive. As is often the case with infection, the problems would only arise over time. Lola's inherent instability would begin to get under her lover's skin. They would find themselves drawn into her problems, but their emotional attachment to her would make them want to help her. This was the crucial point of the disease for Lola could not be held. Her problems were too deep. Once the lover identified with them, he was lost. He would find himself embroiled in quarrels. The infection would spread to his family and friends. Or in the case of Ludwig, to an entire nation, you could spend a lifetime studying the pathology of infecting characters. But don't waste your time. Just learn the lesson. When you suspect you are in the presence of an infect, don't argue. Don't try to help. Don't pass the person on to your friends or you will become enmeshed. Flee the infect's presence or suffer the consequences keys to power. Those misfortunes among us who have been brought down by circumstances beyond their control deserve all the help and sympathy we can give them. But there are others who are not born to misfortune or unhappiness, but who draw it upon themselves by their destructive actions and unsettling effect on others. It would be a great thing if we could raise them up, change their patterns, but more often than not, it is their patterns that end up getting inside and changing us. The incurably, unhappy and unstable have a particularly strong infecting power because their characters, and emotions are so intense, they often present themselves as victims, making it difficult at first to see their miseries as self-inflicted. Before you realize the real nature of their problems, you have been infected by them. Understand this in the game of power that people you associate with are critical. The risk of associating with infects is that you will waste valuable time and energy trying to free yourself through a kind of guilt by association. You will also suffer in the eyes of others. Never underestimate the dangers of infection. 